heaven doing tonight? It's great to see you in the house of the Lord this evening. Come on, let's stand on our feet tonight. Man, so good to be in God's house. Can we just put our hands together and give Him praise right here at the beginning of this service? We are so glad you're here with us. We're going to just lift up our voices together and give Him praise tonight. Is that all right? prayer tonight, church, that the Lord would just come and breathe on us tonight, the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Come and have your way. That's our prayer in this place. Come and have your way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow. So glad you came to worship with us tonight. Does anybody have a heart of expectation for what God wants to do in this place? Amen. I'm telling you, my heart is full. My heart is ready. 
So glad to have evangelist Ron Rhodes in the house tonight. He's going to be bringing the word. Amen. Ron, we are ready to receive whatever the Lord has put on your heart. We believe you are God's voice for this hour. And I believe God wants to speak to us tonight in this place.
than just singing. It's more than just people getting together and lifting their voice. It's people getting together and lifting their voice to praise the God of ages, to praise the God who never changes, who's always the same, who is consistent, who follows through on every promise. We come singing of his goodness even if we're not in a good season, even if what we're going through right now doesn't seem great because we know that we can trust him that we can look at what he's done and trust that he can do it still. So come on, just take this second, fill the room with your praise. Just begin to praise him. Praise him for the victory that's already yours, the victory that he already won for you. You just gotta walk into it. Come on, let's fill this room right now. Thank you, Jesus.
Can we lift up our hands right now? You made a decision to press through whatever you had to get through tonight to get here. And God's going to be faithful. So I want you to just surrender everything that you're worried about, everything that is affecting you, whatever's making you feel bad today, the headache that won't go the way, the pain that won't go away, the worry that won't go away. Because tonight you press through. So God's going to press through to you. So God, we surrender, Lord, everything right now. God, every person made a decision. I'm going to be in the house of God tonight. And God, when you see that, you see that step of faith, you honor that. So, God, I thank you, Lord, for every person that is here tonight, every person that is watching online, if, if, if we're online right now. And I just pray right now that the presence of God would be so strong and so real that not one person would walk out of here carrying the same burden they walked in. Not one person would walk out of here tonight feeling bad, feeling the same pain, the frustration, the, 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 the side. Lord, everything that the enemy would use to distract them right now, God, I pray that you would honor their faithfulness tonight by touching them, God, in preparing them for what you want to do in this place tonight, what you want to do in this altar tonight. God, I thank you, Lord. I just want you to look up here for just a second. I want to build your faith about something. Uh, the, the last 24 hours have been, how should I say it? Uh, the enemy doesn't want tonight to happen so he will do whatever he can to try to stop it. it has nothing to do with me being here at all it has to do with God being here yesterday my family doctor his nurse called my phone couldn't get a hold of me so she called my wife's phone I said, is your husband home? She said, yes. I need to speak to him. She's like, it's crazy. She brings me her phone and the nurse says, the EKG you had done this morning shows that you either have a heart attack or you had a heart attack. You need to get to the ER right now. 
was yesterday. Last night I was in the ER for several hours. Today I went to a cardiologist for him to look at that same EKG that said yesterday that my ST levels were elevated and that was bad news. The radiologist said this afternoon, he said, the computer read it wrong. <laughs> okay. Computer read it wrong or all the people that started praying across the nation yeah, for me. So it's not an accident that you're here tonight. And it's not going to be an accident that God's going to do the breakthrough in your Come life on. tonight. Amen. And the very season of frustration. Last night when I got home from the ER, one o'clock this morning is when God gave me the message. I literally was praying in the spirit too loud apparently that my wife comes out of the bedroom and says, can you pray quieter please? Because me and Hartley are trying to sleep. And I didn't see her coming and she scared me into the second heart attack of the day. I am not kidding. I jumped, I screamed, I literally felt the rush of every chemical release. And then Heather said, you scared me too. So whatever condition you walked in here tonight, God's getting ready to change it Amen. for his glory. And every song they sang tonight was just confirmation of that. Amen. Are you ready to receive? Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. God, you are faithful. God, we open our hearts to you right now. God, we open our hearts to you right now. We will not give up. We will not give in. Lord, we know that you are faithful. And the faithfulness is not based upon us, it's based upon you. Because if it was based upon our faithfulness, none of us would have a chance. None of us. It is your faithfulness. It is your healing. It is your deliverance. It is your purity, your holiness, your provision right now, God, in the name of Jesus that we receive. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor, so much for this opportunity. Uh, if y'all don't know who I am, this is my church. But y'all may not know that because I'm an evangelist. And so if you see me, I'm not working. So most of the time I'm gone. We hope at least. Uh, uh, you know what? I hate to make you stand up again, but I always have people stand for the reading of God's word. Would you just mind taking the word of God and turning to Mark chapter 5? Mark chapter 5. And the story I want to focus on is, is begins in verse 21. Um. And I want to I want to skip down to verse twenty five, Mark chapter five, verse twenty five. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors, and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. Because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately. Come on, somebody needs to receive that. You don't have to wait anymore. You don't have to wait anymore. You don't have to listen to what the doctors, the doctors, she spent 12 years Nothing against doctors. I have personal friends that are doctors. I've got great doctors. In Immediately, her bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. God, we claim that tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Um, 
we're going we're gonna to jump right into it because, the, you know, the, the vision the pastor has for these three Wednesdays is that we give God a chance to do something in this altar. Because I can take up a lot of time, but I can't change you. God's going to change you right here. God is going to change you right here tonight. This morning at 1 a.m., after being in the ER, um, God said that the word for tonight, the specific word is there is a lot of people, whether this has to do with COVID or whether it has to do with something totally opposite or something else. You're in a season of frustration. Um, this woman that we, we know so well about that we have heard that she's the one that pressed through the crowd to touch the hem of God's garment, and she was immediately healed. What, what, a, what a powerful demonstration of what God wants to do individually in your life. And I am speaking to everyone in this place tonight. See, so many times, so many of us come into church because we are so faithful and we immediately think one of the giftings of the Holy Spirit is to figure out who the message is for. <laughs> Instead of never saying, hey, could it possibly be me? I want it to be you tonight. Because this woman, he, he, he talks about this. This is what he was talking about. This is why it's in the word of God. Did you know that God made a statement with this one little book? This one little book. He could have filled a room this size and many size bigger with the stories and the, the wisdom, the knowledge that God has. He could have, but he made a statement. In other words, this little book will be enough. It will be enough. It will be more than enough. It can be preached a million, billion times in your lifetime and the same stories that we all know. And yet God will always have something fresh and new every time because that's who he is. He's deep. He's deep. He's got something fresh tonight for every person. God wants to reveal something just, just like he was this morning to me. You know, God wants to reveal something in a season of frustration. And, and, and this is... This is so important that I lay the foundation because God says there, there, there is this mentality almost because because uh, I went through cancer. And, and so I know what it's like to go through cancer. And I know what it's like for immediately people to you immediately. I mean, out of I mean, I haven't heard from in years. Well, I mean, we're bringing food by and we're doing I mean, all this focus. And it, it's easy sometimes to when we have something physically happen that. Oh, yeah, that, that's when I can believe for God. But yet, when it's the cancer of the eternal, not the cancer of the physical, that we don't think that it's the same. And what I'm talking about tonight is, what have you been trying? What have you been trying to accomplish? This woman spent all she had. Everything. Have you? Are you there? Are you there? Twelve long years. Can you imagine? Some of you can. A lot of us can. Is it? See, <laughs> there's not one person here that doesn't struggle with temptation and sin and the things of the flesh. And you see, if it wasn't, listen to this, this is what God gave me. I'm just giving you directly what God was giving me. If God didn't care even more about the cancer of us, of the eternity, of the eternal, in other words, sin, the struggle of the flesh, worry, fear, those things, then the cross would not have been needed. Only the stripes if all he cared about was the physical cancer. Stripes is what the Bible tells us. 
brings healing to us physically. But it was the cross that brings us healing to us eternally. He takes care of that. The struggle in your mind, the things that you deal with that nobody else knows, that you can't share to anybody. Maybe you don't feel like you can trust anybody with that, but you can trust God. You see, Jesus, he, he saw that moment that you struggle. He, he, he literally dealt with that on the cross. And there's some seasons of frustration that are in this room tonight. And God's wanting to let you know that in the same way, it, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be something that, that you can justify. It doesn't have to be something that you can rationalize. It doesn't have to be something that you can figure out. No, simply this was it. This woman had given everything and she was empty. She was broke. And it was when she was broke, it's when she heard that Jesus was going to walk through her town. <laughs> You're kidding me? Out of all the towns and all the places in the world, Jesus chose when she was broke. And she was so weak. And she was down on her knees. And she literally was so broke physically, mentally, spiritually, in every way, every penny was gone of what she could have done. And yet, she still got no answers. It was that moment that she heard that Jesus was walking through her town. Now, this is what a lot of people never, ever do when they look at this story. This story happens in the reality of another story. See, Jesus, he was, he was making a house call. He was on his way. There was a father that came up to Jesus, the same town at the same time. And he says, my little girl is dying. You've got to come right now. Are you desperate? Are you, is there something that you need a breakthrough? Is, is it a financial? Is it your marriage? Is, is it your physical? Is it your, is it your spiritual? Is it a struggle? Is it an, an addiction, a sin, a, a, a weakness inside of you? Whatever it is, is it a diagnosis? Is it, is it, is it physical? No matter what it is. You see, at this moment, Jesus was laser focused about getting. This was not a moment to mess around because that father ran up to it. And I don't know if you know what it's like, but I've sat there holding my 16-month little baby girl. As the doctor looked at us and said, I'm sorry, but your little girl, the reason she had a seizure is because she has a rare and incurable disease. She has so many tumors on her brain and her heart that we can't even count them all. And all we can tell you is you take your little girl home and you enjoy what time you have with her. I will never forget that moment as we walked out into that doctor's parking lot and you couldn't, have, you couldn't have sucked any more life out of me at that moment. And walked out in that doctor's parking lot and we were crying. As you can imagine, and we were, we were completely emptied of everything at that moment. Wait a minute. God, I've given my life to you. I've given my life to the calling. And yet my little girl... Wait, I, we have a choice right now. 
Wait a minute. Wait. wait. I'm just going to preach about it, but I'm not going to live it. I'm just going to read about it, but I'm not going to take it and apply it to my life when it matters the most. When it matters the most. Come on, this is when we've got to press through the crowd. She pressed through. She was weak. She was worn down. She was broke. She had nothing left. Literally, spiritually, physically, financially, in every way, it can be so sucked dry. And yet, she just had to touch the hem of his garment. And she was immediately healed. She had no conversation with Jesus. She didn't get this long run up to him like the father did. He was headed because a little girl was dying. I know what that's like to feel desperate and to be a daddy with a daughter that was dying. But can I tell you, she's now 24 years old and God is the healer of the incurable. You see... The great thing about the incurable is that when God heals, he gets all the credit. Because man's already said, I can't do it. Remember when Peter was a fisherman and he, he went out as they went out every night and they used nets and they caught fish and that's how he paid the bills. And yet a, a season of frustration, a night of frustration came upon him. And no matter what he tried, he was a professional fisherman. And yet everything he tried, he didn't catch one fish. Is that where you're at? Nothing works. Nothing. The breakthrough that you've cried for 12 years. Maybe it's 14. Maybe it's 20. Maybe it's 50. It doesn't matter. It's not about the amount of years. It's about what God wants to do. It was at that moment after a long frustrating night of Peter trying everything that he could do. And yet he couldn't catch a fish. And so they come to the beach and he just surrenders. You know how to tell when a fisherman surrenders? It's when they wash their nets. And the Bible says literally when they were washing their nets. Is when Jesus shows up. You got some nets that are empty tonight? You got something that you have prayed for for so many years. And it hasn't happened. You're sitting there. And you're not, you don't know how you're going to pay the bills. See, Peter wasn't just out to fish for just to catch a few nice big bass or something and be able to post them on Facebook or something. You know, it's, it's, this is not... This is not an Instagram moment, okay? This is not a Twitter moment. This is, this is a real moment that he's going to go home and his wife is going to look at him and she's going to ask, how many fish did you catch tonight? And he's going to have to say to his wife, the big zero. Maybe that's exactly where you are. Jesus, come on, get this. This is, this is powerful. He says, Peter, I need to use your boat. You don't, you don't want my boat. My boat is empty. My boat is a boat of failure. My boat is just a little rowboat. Look down the beach. There's better boats, Jesus. Just keep on going. I'm just an old fisherman. And Jesus says, oh, Peter, you have no idea. I'm going to mess you up with physical fish. But then I'm going to tear you apart with the fish of men. In other words, I'm going to show you I can take care of the physical. But then I'm going to show you. I don't want to use you. 
God wants to use you. You say, you don't understand. Look at all the other boats. Can I tell you what all the other boats? They may have power motors and you have oars. They may have a slick paint job and you are so beat up and it hasn't seen fresh paint in years. It may not have a fish finder on it. It may not have a radar. It may not have cup holders. It may not have a stereo. It may not have anything that you could put on a boat. And that's who Jesus shows up and says, but listen, before the blessing, before the miracle, I need to use your boat. I need you to take a step of faith with me. I need you to do so. I need you to go somewhere with me right now. And you know what? God is telling his church, quit being in the business of comparing ourselves. Because God does not compare boats. That is not how he uses us. That is not what he looks at. He is not evaluating you tonight because based upon the failures of your life, the darkness, the, the things that you struggle with, that's not what God does at you and he says I choose you you are the one that's empty broken and that's why Jesus stopped wait a minute there's a little girl dying you gotta come you can imagine the dad saying come on Jesus and Jesus all of a sudden turns junior high <laughs> somebody touched me <laughs> come on parents come on back seat that you hear from the back seat? Come on. How many times, huh? Daddy, somebody's touching me. It's my brother that I don't like. It's my sister. Somebody's touching me. And literally the, the disciples responded like that. They said, seriously, Jesus? You're bigger than Justin Bieber. Can you see this crowd right now? Wherever Jesus went, there was huge crowds. Right? That was no shock. That was no revelation. And everybody's always wanting to touch Jesus. But Jesus said, I gotta bring attention to this moment because I'm headed to a little girl that's dying, but I still have time for this woman because she's been dealing with hers for 12 years. Jesus said to Peter, after he used his boat for ministry, if you're not actively involved in some kind of ministry in our church, now's the time. Quit waiting. You're not going to be perfect. You're not going to be without any scars and, and battle wounds. No, that's the people that God uses. Because I'm looking at this crowd. I know some of you. It's beautiful what God has done. And God's saying, let me into your boat. You don't understand, Jesus. I am hungry. I stink. And I'm really tired. And I just want to go home. No, Peter. I don't just need your boat but I need you to get in the boat with me because I'm going to show you something. I'm going to take you someplace. God wants to show us something. He wants to take us someplace. Listen to this. The reason why some of us are not, literally, if you go to that story, it says they, they went out into deep waters, and that's where they let down the nets, where they didn't catch anything all night from the professional fishermen. A carpenter of all people gets in the boat and tries to tell the professional fisherman, hey, in the middle of the day, Put down your nets. No, Jesus, that's not how it works. They see the nets and swim around them. It's daylight. They can see. That's why we do it at night. You're a carpenter. So go back to the workshop wherever you came from because that doesn't work. Let me tell you, the one that created the fish. Come on. The one that created the fish can say, get in the net. 
I don't care what day it is. I don't care how long you struggled. I don't care how long the battle has been. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal your marriage. I'm going to bring your kid back to God. I'm going to bring your grandkid back. I'm going to restore something that has been taken from you. I'm going to provide for you financially. I'm going to provide a job. I'm going to do a breakthrough in your life. And the reason why so many of us, listen, when they let down the nets, it says they caught such a large catch that the net began to break. And God's saying the reason why so many of us are not seeing net breaking blessings, we know what it's like. Listen, they caught such a big amount of fish that the boat began to sink. And God says, there's so many people that know what it's like to sink under the curse. But he wants to show us what it's like to sink under the blessing. And the reason why... The reason why so many of us are not seeing that is we have chosen to remain in shallow waters. You see, it was ministry time in the shallow waters, but it was after that that Jesus says, you're going to have to put out into deep waters. No, you don't understand. I'm so tired. I am worn out. I have to row out to the deep waters. There's more of a risk, Jesus. The waves are bigger. The storm can come. The wind can come. You don't understand, Jesus. I am empty. I am done. I am literally broke he says Peter trust me come on row out into the deep waters you see if you choose to remain in shallow waters in whatever area of your life what's in shallow waters minnows minnows go right through the net that's the reason you'll never see your finances turn around until you start tithing to God through your local church that you attend that's the plan of God until you start giving until you start saying use my boat do you know one of the other parts of our ministry is is an international soccer ministry we've done 43 soccer salvation camps and crusades all over the world Asia South America, Central America, North America, the Caribbean, Europe, Africa, Asia. And oh yeah, he chose me. The guy that's never played soccer in my life. (laughs) So if you're worried about your boat and your qualifications, it's the ones that will never say, look at me. See, one time I was... in a soccer salvation camp in Lima, Peru, and I decided to get out there, and I'm just going to I'm gonna play a soccer game with these kids, and I'm going to show them what this is all about. I've learned a few tricks. I've watched professionals. We've had World Cup soccer players. We've had professional soccer players, guys that are Christians, and they show up, and they do little things and tricks and show their skills and give their testimony. It's incredible. I've learned some things. All of a sudden, the ball was coming to me, and it was my moment, and I ran back and kicked as hard as I could. But when my foot got to the ball, the ball wasn't there. But an opposing person on the other team, their shin was. Let me tell you something about shins. They do not give, and it really hurts. And literally, I hobbled off of the field, totally, completely humiliated, had to come back to the United States, have a foot surgery, and I have a... I have a screw in this left foot and a scar that reminds me every day, stick to preaching. Everybody stand with me. I don't know if I can preach either, but I'm going to let God use my boat because I've done this for 26 years as a full-time evangelist. 56 countries, 3 million miles. And I still don't got it figured out. If you knew how I was feeling tonight, if you knew my wife is home, sick, in pain for 10 days now. And anybody that knows hardly our little three-year-old that we just adopted last year. Wow, you cannot be sick around that kid. She will not let you be sick. <laughs> Heather wanted to be here tonight. Immediately, 
immediately. Come on, just bow your heads and close your eyes real quick. I know we're out of time, and if you gotta go, you gotta go. We understand that. to do something in your life. You see, some of you need a 12-year healing. Some of you need a 12-year healing. Even though Jesus stopped and took care of this woman that had this disease in the blood for 12 long years, and he says, I, I just got to stop and I just got to find out what just happened because healing just flowed out of me. And I know there was just a miracle that just took place, even though he stopped. And literally, people rushed up from the house of the little girl. And he said to the dad, Oh, you were too late. Your little girl's dead. Don't even bother Jesus anymore. Don't bother him. Don't have him come to your house. Don't have him come to your house because she's dead. I'm here to tell you if Jesus has to stop and take care of somebody else's need, he's still going to be on time. He's still going to be on time. He's still going to be on time because when he shows up, the dead start living. The people that are diseased are start healed. The people that need deliverance are set free. Come on, church, tonight. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what your frustration is. I don't care what your season of frustration is God wants to do something right now every head bowed every eye closed right now real quick I just want to quickly ask you there's, there's just one question was this message for you tonight if it was raise your hand 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 every person that's got your hand raised get down here to this altar quickly hurry 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 this is your boat moment this is your boat moment come on hurry 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 this is your moment this is your moment you're pressing through the crowd come on this is your moment this is your breakthrough I don't care what it is. I don't care how long you've dealt with it. I don't care what the struggle is. I don't care what nobody else knows. Does it matter? Anybody else? Come on. This is, this is your moment that God has been speaking to you throughout this entire message. That this is your night. This is your moment of breakthrough. Come on. I don't care what it is, what you're facing, what your season of frustration is. Come on, anybody else? Come on, anybody else? Come on, just step out right now. Just step out. Just step out. You say, I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. I don't, I don't even come to this church. I, I'm a visitor. I've never been to church. It doesn't matter right now. God's speaking to you. You know it. You don't know. You can't explain it, but God's speaking to you right now. Come on, step out right now. Now is your moment that God is saying, if you will let me into your boat, Peter, I will do something that you have never seen. I'm going to sink you under the blessing. I'm going to net break your blessing. I'm going to pour into your life and I'm going to use you in a supernatural way and literally Peter would be turned into one of the 12 disciples as we very well know so God's not here to compare boats tonight I want to ask any prayer workers any of the intercessors would you come right now? Because we're going to pray. And we're going to believe right now. Any ministers, anybody that uh, you know how to pray, you know how to believe, we're going to believe right now. We're going to believe right now. God's going to do something right now. God's going to do something right now. God's getting your focus off what you're going through. And he's getting your focus upon him. Because when you're weak, when you're broken, when you don't have anything left, you don't have any energy left, that's when we press through. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm just going to, I'm going to encourage you right now. 
I don't want you to wait for somebody to pray with you. Too many times we wait for somebody to do something when all God's saying just I, it's just between me and you right now. It's just between me. It's just Jesus and Peter. He just walked up to Peter and said, I need to use your boat right now. I need you to get back in the boat and I need to use it right now. So I need you to just press in the only way that you know how. The only way that you know how. He said, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to, I don't know what the next step is. I want you just right now just to simply start saying, God, use my boat. God, heal me. God, deliver me. God, I need that breakthrough in my life immediately. Right now, immediate. Let's pray right now. Let's pray right now. Everybody else, reach out your hands right now. Come on, if you got a family or a friend down here, I want you to come put your hands on their back right now. Put your hand on their shoulder, and I want you to begin to pray with them right now. Come on, if you got a friend, you got a family member down here, you got someone you know down here, come on, let's start praying. Let's start believing. Come on. This is where we start seeing God use our boat immediately, Lord.
declaring this tonight. You are the same. Are you thankful that he's a rock that doesn't move tonight? Come on, let's give the Lord some praise in this place. Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Lord, for your steadfast love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Even to a thousand generations, God, thank you for your faithfulness. I believe somebody might have broke through and touched the hem of his garment tonight. Tonight, we're going we're gonna to just end this moment with, I, I want to just give an exhortation to you. As we end this service, I want to just encourage you. You know, as a church, we're in 21 days of fasting and prayer. And whether you're doing that or not, let me just challenge you right now to begin to press in. Ron, I love what you said. I felt like it was a word that just jumped in my spirit when you said the reason a lot of us haven't seen God do the greater works is because we haven't gone to the deeper waters. Come on, greater works require deeper waters. We can't stand in the shallows and ask God to show himself mighty. We've got to step out. It was the Israelites that stepped into the water at flood stage that saw God part the Jordan. Sometimes we're saying God part the waters and God's saying step in the deep. And I just want to give you this a word of exhortation tonight that if, if the Lord was dealing with you tonight and calling you deep, as deep calls out to deep, the scripture says, he's calling us to deeper waters. Maybe that looks like you need to pick up your Bible every day and start a devotion. Maybe that means you need to, you know, switch the stations, back off the station where you lose your dog, your family, your, you know, the country station, and back onto the Christian station and fill your mind with things that exalt the Lord. Maybe the deeper waters for you, you know, is a real practical application. And you need to say, you know what, I'm not going to do this once a month thing. I'm going to get back in the house of God every time the doors are open. I'm going to press in. I'm not going to wait to see what the atmosphere of the service is or 
I, I'm, I'm going to show up and be the thermostat. I'm going to come ready and hot, and I'm pressing into God's presence. But can I just encourage you, God wants to do greater works. And usually, yes, that means there will be greater waves because greater works need deeper waters. And I just sensed tonight when he said that God is, God is calling some of us to press in like never before. That's what this season's all about, pressing in, pressing in until we finally break through into what God has for us. Would you lift your hands with me all over this room? Father, today, Lord, we just... We lift our hands as a sign of surrender. Lord, because you won't do the work until we surrender. And so, Lord, we surrender the boat. We surrender uh, our time, our talent, our resources, our lives, our preconceived ideas of what you can and can't do. We surrender all that. And, Lord, we say, would you, would you call us into the deep? Would you call us into the greater works? May we see you do something in this next season in our lives and in our church that we have never seen before. For you declared, behold, I'm doing a new thing in the wilderness. I'm making straight paths through the wasteland. God, do a new thing in us. In Jesus' name. In all God's people said amen. 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 Val, Kayla, lead us in that song one more time. Thank you for being here tonight. I pray God bless you. Have a wonderful week.